Um, we are moving on to our very last speaker. We are moving just beyond the EU to Turkey. Uh, our speaker is Mehmet Beji from Yildirim Beja University in Ankara, and he's going to talk about intermediaries and the Turkish law and his delicate balance between rights and obligations. Thank you so much. It's my extreme pleasure and honor to appear before you, and it's an honor to be the last speaker. <laughs> it will be a short and brief uh, presentation. I will uh, talk through the regulation of internet intermediaries under the Turkish law, and I will evaluate whether there is a delicate balance of regulation. My pl uh, presentation plan is that first I will provide a very short overview of the institutional and legal framework, then I will look through both the rights and obligations of the uh, internet service providers as well as hosting providers, then I will evaluate the balance uh, and question what is the uh, reason of this kind of uh, regulation. I will skip lot of, lots of uh, slides so you can see QR code for the slide and also you can download it from the uh, link uh, on the screen. Uh, Turkey, a member of Council of Europe, uh, NATO, OECD, ITU, a candidate country for European Union membership among G20 major economies with population of 77 million uh, and half of the people under the age of 30. So we can uh, identify it as a young uh, populated country. The number of broadband internet subscribers are increasing gradually. Uh, currently, by uh, 2015, uh, there are about 40 million subscribers, internet sub sub subscribers in Turkey. At the very same time, uh, mobile uh, penetration rate is also uh, on the increase. In particular, 3G is uh, popular in Turkey and uh, disseminated uh, across the population. Uh, as of 2015, there are about 400 ISPs operating in Turkey. Uh, at the very same time, there are about 400 uh, hosting providers, uh, which host about uh, seven, uh, more than uh, 700,000 websites. And Turkey has very ambitious goals uh, to reach by uh, 2023. We have a legal framework. Uh, we call it the law 5651, which is the constitution of the uh, internet in Turkey. It regulates three main issues. The very first thing that it regulates, it regulates the legal, criminal and administrative liability of uh, internet in, uh, intermediaries, such as contact, uh, sorry, hosting providers, ISPs and public use providers as well as is, it lays down a procedure called restricting access to illegal content and lastly it uh, regulates the notice and take down procedures. When we talk about institutional framework, there are three uh, important authorities uh, in the implementation of the law. The first is BTK, this is the main regulatory body. Within this body we have a TIP which also uh, have some powers in res uh, restricting access to certain websites on certain grounds and we have access providers to India. First, I will move to the uh, regime of ISPs. Uh, first of all, we look to the liability regime. The liability regime is a liable one uh, which follows up the European Union's uh, e-commerce uh, directive which says that uh, ISPs are not responsible for checking whether the content accessed via their systems is illegal or gives them any responsibilities. So they are passive uh, in, uh, on that regard. This is the most significant right conferred uh, on ISPs in Turkey. After laying down such a liberal uh, uh, provision regime for ISPs, the internet law imposes different liabilities. First of all, they, uh, ISPs should obtain a license. Then they should be member uh, to uh, this access providers union. 
they must pay, uh, pay a membership fees to uh, uh, this uh, access providers union. Whenever they want to terminate their services, they should notify the Turkish authority, BTK, uh, for that decision. They need to provide certain information available online, and they should keep that information updated every time. The most important liability is that they are required to restrict access to illegal content and any circumvention tools. The decision of deciding about what constitutes illegal content can be uh, uh, derived from two different sources. The very first source is court in, uh, injunctions, and the second uh, case is decisions rendered by uh, TIP, the administrative body uh, in charge of implementation of the law. In that regard, ISP, uh, ISPs are required to restrict access to that content. Until 2014, uh, the method that was being used was DNS restriction method. So, the only way was closing the whole website for restricting access. But as you know, there is a Turkish case uh, that has been resolved before the European Court of Human Rights, Ahmet Yildirim case, which uh, found that the implementation under the Turkish law, which restricts access to the whole website, is a violation of freedom of speech. So after 2014, any provision was inserted into the law saying that the website should be blocked on URL based. But the point is that in order to implement URL based restriction, you should have a package inspection system, which is an expensive system. You should invest in hardware and software. The law made it clear that the ISPs under the requirement of restricting access to illegal websites, at the very same time, the law made it clear that the ISPs themselves should uh, bear all the cost of investment. So there is no recourse to public fund for that. And apart from restricting access to any illegal websites, at the very same time, ISPs are required to restrict access to uh, circumvention tools. So this adds another uh, obligation on the shoulders of ISPs. They should implement judicial and administrative decisions. Uh, they should retain traffic information for one year. They should cooperate with TIP. Uh, they should uh, also offer a mandatory filtering under the name of safe internet service. A very similar provision for hosting providers. I will skip some uh, slides. Hosting providers also uh, have a very similar regime. They are passive. They are not required to check the content they are hosting. They are not liable until they are noticed about an illegal activity. They should notify uh, the commencement of their operations. They should be transparent. They should provide certain information online. They should remove illegal content from board broadcast. They should implement judicial and administrative court administrative decisions. They should retain traffic for one year. They should cooperate with uh, team. They should uh, uh, they have sorry they uh, are under certain obligations. The question is that when we uh, check the balance, uh, there is. Uh, I identify this as an uh, uh, example of over-regulation. In particular, the infrastructure cost for ISPs is a significant cost. It can cost millions of dollars, and the law says it should be effective. At the same time, there are different types of ju uh, judicial and administrative fines. Within my paper, I have laid down all of them with detail the and converted them from Turkish dirhams to USD dollars for reference. So it's a big burden. The question is that why are they uh, uh, under such a uh, rigid uh, regime regulation? Uh, under the previous uh, session, uh, I think Dr. Natalia. Uh, she mentioned that governments should do something. And it's the case in Turkey. 
Particularly, uh, when we look at the amendments to the law, they almost uh, stands for a certain so social uh, event in Turkey. For instance, social media has been used uh, <coughs> during social events. Then we had a regulation that increased the level of cooperation with administrative bodies. At the very same time, when uh, uh, social media companies they have shows a certain uncooperative behavior, any administrative fine was imposed on any website that doesn't show cooperation. So we can say that there is a, uh, the regulation of Turkey, uh, Turkish inter intermediaries could be classified as over-regulation. Uh, thank you so much for your interest. <laughs> and, uh,